Well, each one of us is an instrument of peace and it is a choice to begin to live from that awareness and understanding. Uh, peace isn't something that happens because nothing's going on in my life and I'm sitting in my happy place and all is well. Peace is something I choose moment to moment, whether the experience I'm having is difficult or beautiful. We have to make that decision. So one of the things that you know, we sometimes realize is that our world, well, our world right now, it feels like it's falling to pieces, but I'm not so sure that's so different than in other times in history, because it seems like this has been an ongoing story. And sometimes our personal lives, things are kind of falling apart and we don't know necessarily what to do. So we will sometimes react in ways that are less than appropriate. And sometimes we give in to things that maybe we shouldn't. So what we wanna do is we wanna tune in to that peace that is at the center of our soul. We all have it. It's a natural attribute. It's not something that we go get. It's something that we actually are and we can trigger that in any moment. So when it feels like everything in life is falling to pieces, what do we do? How do we find that peace when we're confused and living in the illusion of separation and the fact that there doesn't appear to be peace in our world? But spiritual wisdom and tools can help us awaken and rise to that greater idea. Ernest Holmes, the founder of the Science Mind, said, peace is always at the center of our own soul. Oneness, peace, and harmony prevail. Spiritual tools in our toolkit for life help us to have a greater experience in our personal and collective experience. And so as we explore the idea of peace, we're gonna look at some of the tools we can use to help us tap into that. And so I wanted to share with you some things that, that are going on in the world around us and the things going on in my life and maybe things that are similar in your own. There are things that happen that cause us to feel maybe anxious or fearful, uh, filled with doubt or worry. And I think what we wanna do is in those moments, remind ourselves that the outer effect has already been created, but the inner reality is the power that we possess. And if we tap into that, we can begin to experience what's going on around us in a different way. Doesn't mean what's going on around us changes. It means how I perceive it will change. So when we're talking about not peace, <laughs> when we're in that place of upset or turmoil or whatever, it's about how do I bring myself back? And as we use the tools that we have here in the science mind, it makes it really easy to begin to see the possible ways that we can shift. Ernest Holmes wrote an article called The Peace That Conquers. And he wrote, you and I know that no matter how confused we are, if we will get by ourselves long enough and think peace, we shall become peaceful. Peace is the divine reality at the heart of God. It is announcement of the presence of God and God is peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace give I unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Oh, those untos and those ones always hurt me up a little bit. The idea is that as I begin to feel peaceful within myself, I begin to radiate that energy of peacefulness and then that comes back to me multiplied. So that's the key we're looking for, regardless of circumstance. So I had a rough week. Um, you know, some of us do that sometimes. Well, I slipped and fell. Uh, well, I actually, I was sitting on a chair and the chair slipped off the edge of my deck and threw me over onto our lower deck. And I uh, <laughs> dislocated my shoulder and fractured the top part of the humerus. So very painful, off to the hospital. And here's the thing, even though the pain was severe and... I could barely breathe half the time. Uh, the EMS people who took me in, they were amazing. They were so much fun. Um, you know, the the one fellow who was in the back of the ambulance with me, he was he was able to, you know, just say little quips here and there. And and I always go along with that. I think it's a really fun thing to do, to smile and laugh, because what it does is in the moments when I would, you know, have some sort of back and forth with him. For a moment, I felt okay. 
It's not that the pain went away, but my mind was elsewhere and it was on something joyful. And so he had me laughing and and uh, as we were driving across the very, very bumpy roads to the hospital, I was just laughing going, oh my goodness, this drive usually takes 10 minutes. Today, it feels like an hour. And it does feel that way, doesn't it? When we're having something really hard happening to us and we're in pain, we will in fact experience things as slowed right down. Well, that's kind of what my experience was. Sometimes we can have these experiences and, and stay peaceful, which I was able to do. Yes, I was in pain and yes, there were some tears and there was definitely a few, oh my goodness, but never did I feel angry. I mean, it was my own stupidity. Who am I gonna get angry at, right? So, so when these things happen, we, we have a choice about how we deal with it and we can deal with it in a peaceful, joyful manner if we choose. And if we do, what happens is there's a, a huge benefit that happens. Number one, the people around you begin to see you know, another way of being. And I recall uh, about five years ago, my ex-husband passed away unexpectedly and he was in hospital for about three weeks before uh, he asked to be unplugged. And in that three week time, he was in excruciating pain pretty much all the time. And the nurses would come in and move him around and that was very painful. And the doctors would come in and poke and prod. But here's what's interesting. Whenever someone left the room, he would thank them and tell them that he loved them. Yeah. And he would joke with them. So there was a student nurse who came in. Now, he um, had a cavernoma, which caused him to be a paraplegic. He was <clears throat> he had to have a trach in order to breathe. And so he was in fairly rough shape. So a student nurse comes in one day and he stops breathing. He holds his breath. And she's listening and she's checking and there's nothing. The machine, it, so she's all freaked out. She goes running out to the head nurse going, oh my gosh, I don't know what's going on, but, but he's not breathing. The nurse comes in and goes, Ken, smarten up. <laughs> and of course, he just laughed going, you know, he's just being himself. He was being this very funny person. But by doing the things that we would normally do, rather than becoming mad or frustrated or upset, I mean, life happens. We're here on a spiritual uh, experience of being a human being, right? Like we're spiritual and we're having the human experience and the human experience can be, yeah, it can be a little difficult at times. And what I'm finding as I'm aging is, you know, it can be a little difficult often. But the truth is that we can take it with a grain of salt and still maintain our peace, even in the midst of what appears to be wrong or hurtful or unfair. You know, somebody once said, you know, the life that life is fair because it's unfair for everybody. I liked that. I thought, oh, it's an interesting way of looking at it. So when we're having that feeling of not peace, it's time to kind of interrupt. It's time to stop whatever's going on and, and just take a pause. And I remember as a little girl, my mom used to say, if I got mad about something, stop, take a breath and count to 10. I thought it was the dumbest thing I ever heard. I thought, I'll count to 10 and I'll still be mad. But <laughs> what I know now is that I count to 10 and it allows me to calm. It allows me to get more peaceful. So the tools that, that I use are meditation first, meditation, powerful way of becoming centered, a powerful way of quieting the body, the mind, coming more into harmony with the entire process, the body, mind, soul. And as we come into harmony with that, there's a greater sense of comfort that we begin to experience. So meditation is a very practical tool and there's a zillion different ways to do it. There isn't just one way to meditate, lots of ways to meditate. So I invite you to explore that. If it's not one of your current practices, maybe consider making it one. It really is powerful. The other thing that we do <clears throat> is we do spiritual mind treatment. 
which uh, some people call affirmative prayer. And spiritual mind treatment is about acknowledging that there is an intelligence in the universe and that it's everywhere present, all powerful and all knowing. And that that presence, because it's everywhere, it must be where I am and where you are. So it's actually being us. And when we begin to tap into that idea, we can begin to shift our experience so that we're not, we may not be feeling perfectly well, but that doesn't mean we have to be angry or dismayed. We can actually still be joyful, excited, delighted, and maybe a little slower than normal. You know, my daughter dressed me this morning because I can't do it myself. <laughs> But what a gift that is, that I have this 19-year-old who's happy to just jump in and do what needs to be done. You see, we're all looked after in some way or another. And the more we can acknowledge that, the greater the experience is of living this human experience. Now, I don't believe we came into a life experience so that, you know, it would all be a bed of roses and sunshine and no, I was going to say rainbows, but you got to have a little rain for that. Like all of those things, I think sometimes we get a little mixed up and we think that life really is supposed to be smooth sailing start to finish. But think about that for a second. If every single person on the planet had everything going perfectly according to their desires, what kind of experience is that or lack of experience? I think sometimes we have to have other things around us. You know, we might go whitewater rafting or we may jump out of an airplane and skydive. Why do we do those things? Because they're exciting. They're different. They keep us awake. They move us in a way that maybe sitting on our sofa watching television won't do. So I invite you to really take a look at how you experience this living journey knowing that there isn't a destination, right? There isn't a destination here. We are here to simply live for the time that we're here in this realm. And the living that we do is up to us. So what peace we want to experience, we must choose it. So exploring what peace is can help us to awaken to the truth that it's ever present within us. That way we know we can access it whenever we need it, especially when we're experiencing not peace. You know, I had a little incident on Friday where I was experiencing not peace. I had booked a, an Airbnb for uh, Wednesday and Thursday because I was doing a wedding about three hours away from Toronto. So I needed to uh, stay overnight there. And my husband and I went, we decided to make it a little mini vacation. So the host of Airbnb called us back and said, hey, how would you like to add a day? Because nobody's booked for Friday. You could stay till Saturday. And we were like, yeah, we're in. So we decided to do that. Friday morning at about quarter to nine, we get a memo from him saying, thank you so much for staying with us. And we hope you'll give us a great review. And I called him back and I said, uh, we're here till tomorrow. And he went, oh, no, somebody else booked it. I was in not peace <laughs> for quite a while. <laughs> I won't lie to you about that. As my husband, he got to listen as we were driving back. Now here I have this, this broken bone. I can't use my arm. So of course, Pierre had to load up the car. He had to, you know, make sure everything was tidied up in the Airbnb, get the dog out, get me out, get me dressed, all that kind of stuff. There was a lot of work involved. So I was a little bit cranky about it. And, but, you know, I sit back now and I go, well, let me see. There's actually bonuses. It saved me one day of the rental. So that's a bonus. The other thing was the people who moved into the cabin beside us were very, very loud. Now I'm a very loud person. My husband is also a very loud person. And these people, when they were in their cabin, I could hear that everything they were saying while I was sitting in my cabin, which is not attached to theirs. So, so there was the plus side of actually having a more quiet, serene surroundings once I got home. Um, but sometimes we get, you know, we get really unnerved when somebody says or does something that we think is unreasonable or that, 
you know, we don't deserve that or whatever. And what we want to do is remember, I am responsible for my life and you are responsible for yours. And if, if we can manage that, what we do is we end up moving forward in a way that allows us to really take a look at where our power exists. I can change my life, but I can't change yours. That's up to you. So peace moves us from the feeling of being separate in the world to the realization of oneness. And that is the really big difference that we're looking for. We're looking at how we can experience life in the world by realizing that all of us are some part of this infinite universe. And because we're all part of it, there can never be separation. And so everything that's occurring is occurring through us. Uh, Dr. Holmes defines peace in the Science Mind textbook as peace, a state of inner calm, an inner calm so complete that nothing can disturb it. The peace which comes from the knowledge that it is all fathomless peace is meant by the peace of the spirit. This is the peace that was referred to as this infinite energy of calm. There's nothing to disturb it. A realization of our oneness with omnipresence brings peace. So when we start to recognize that we are part of this universe, that the universe of itself is one whole thing, we live, move, and have our being in it. The energy of my body is the universal energy. The energy of your body is the universal energy. So when we start to acknowledge that and the fact that we are powerful, that we are intelligent, that we are creative, we start to acknowledge all of that. We start to realize that I don't have to, you know, feel broken and flawed because I've already been created perfect, whole, and complete. So I can turn myself around and go, wait a minute, let me notice what's really happening around me. And then from there, notice what I'm thinking about. Now you notice there's a class coming up called Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. And I know that sounds, that sounds pretty simple, right? Change your thinking, change your life. Um, it works. Simple, yes. Easy, mm, not so much. I remember years ago, like when I first got into ministry, which was like, I don't know, 25, 26 years ago, when I first got into ministry, I would do my Sunday service and then oh, I was exhausted. I'd go and crash on the couch and watch a movie. Just let the day wind down. And then one day I thought, I really love this. So why am I so tired after? And what I realized was I remembered something my father said when I was little throughout most of my life. And I thought, wow, that's my belief system. And my belief system was you have to work hard to earn a living. So me doing something I love, which I found truly effortless, well, that wasn't the model. It needed to be hard if I'm expecting a paycheck, right? I gotta, I gotta make it look hard. It's gotta be difficult, right? So I ended up changing it. So every time I would think, wow, this is really hard. I would go, no, maybe it's easy. And I would tell myself instead, well, wow, this is really easy. When I changed those four letters, because that's all they are is four letters, but they have a very different meaning. And as I began to live with the idea that life could be easy, things have changed quite dramatically for me. And especially in the last couple of years, I would say the last two years have been the best years of my life. And although I'm coming up to those you know, those final years, not anytime soon, uh, I'm pretty healthy. But, you know, as you get older, you start to realize that, wow, I have less time ahead of me than I have behind me. And what do I want to do with that? Now, wouldn't it be amazing if we did that when we were 20? Going, wow, what do I really want to do? What makes my heart sing? What brings me incredible joy? See, when we're doing things that we enjoy, things that we love, life is much easier. It is more peaceful. Because even if something happens like, you know, a broken bone or, 
or, uh, you know, a, a big bill comes in the mail that you didn't expect, we realize that that's simply something that has been created that actually has nothing to do with the essence of who I am. And when we begin to shift that, we start to see that I have the ability to weather the storm. So I don't have to react to it. I don't have to get angry and frustrated about it. What I do need to do is just draw a breath, sit quietly for a bit, go into nature, sit by a tree, feel the energy of the tree, and just allow that calm to really take hold. So one of the things that you can do, here's sort of a quick little emergency plan to transform your pieces into peace. Stop, drop, and treat. That's what we call it, stop, drop, and treat. Stop, stop whatever you're doing. Notice without judgment, there's the hard part, notice without judgment that you're not feeling peaceful and then turn away from the condition. So maybe you're not feeling peaceful because you're on the phone with a friend and they're angry with you for some reason. You might wanna say, oh, I'm sorry, I've got somewhere I have to be, let's finish this later and hang up. You wanna stop whatever is causing the disturbance. And then drop. So drop from your head into your heart space. Yes, breathe and go within and treat. Do your treatment knowing that spirit, the essence of life is here where I am. It's powerful and positive and productive. And allow that, that prayer, that affirmative prayer to fill you with ideas of truth. Ideas of truth. Because when we pray as peace, knowing only good and greater good is unfolding, then we are recognizing that there is a power for good in the world, greater than I am, but I get to use it. And if I use it now, it begins to shift that energy, begin to shift it into a new way of being. So when our world seems to be in pieces, when we're in a state of confusion, Dr. Holmes has a suggestion to help us reveal our truth of peace. And he has this quote out of this thing called you again. I am surrounded by peace. I am immersed in peace. There is nothing but peace. Peace, deep, calm, undisturbed. Mm, breathe that in, yes. When we begin to focus our attention on that, the outer experiences around us no longer have power over us. So no matter what's happening out there, you can know that there is a power for good in the universe greater than you are, and you can use it. Wow. That's a good idea, right? So the peace is within you already, and it's simply got to be accessed. And as we access it and we give up the idea of separation, when we give up the ideas of, you know, good and bad, right and wrong, and begin to acknowledge that there's only one thing going on. And all of the experiences I have are happening within that one thing. When I can allow myself, you know, to basically stop, drop and pray or stop, drop and treat, what I know is that everything now is going to change. And it does, and it changes really, really quickly. At the front of the Science of Mind textbook, Ernest Holmes wrote a, a poem that, I, that I've always liked. I've always liked it. It's uh, peace be unto thee, stranger. Peace be unto thee, stranger. Enter and be not afraid. I have left the gate open, and thou art welcome to my home. There is room in my house for all. I have swept the hearth and lighted the fire. The room is warm and cheerful, and you will find comfort and rest within. The table is laid, and the fruits of life are spread before thee. 
The wine is here also, sparkles in the light. I have set a chair for you where the sunbeams dance through the shade. Sit and rest and refresh your soul. Eat of the fruit and drink the wine. All, all is yours and you are welcome. What I love about this poem and have always loved about this poem is that this is the piece that I feel even in meeting a stranger. Can I welcome a stranger into my experience in the same way I would invite family and friends? Can I treat all people, can I treat all people with reverence? Can I treat all people with a sense of love and acceptance? Can I move through this life experience allowing people to be who they are even though I may not understand their choices and stay in my own lane and focus on my own healing, my own journey, rather than worrying about what someone else is doing. And this is where the teaching gets difficult. It really is. The teaching is very simple. Change your thinking, change your life. Wherever you focus your attention, that is what's going to expand and grow. It's that simple. The hard part is that sometimes we come in contact with people that upset us, annoy us, do something that might cause us pain. And immediately we go to judgment, criticism, anger, frustration, whatever. There's a whole myriad of things we might feel in that moment. But what we want to do is withdraw and go, wow, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe this isn't for me. You know, my experience with the Airbnb on Friday, you know, it's like just changing things around and going, you know what, I don't have to, I don't have to stay in this frustration. You know, he changed the plan. So I've got a moment, but if I live in that, so if I kept that anger running, what happens is he might have taken away, you know, a few moments of my pleasure, but I just took away tons of it. Why? By reliving, recounting, expanding, continuing, raging, right? So it is our thinking that gets us doing that. You see, the event that occurs, the event of itself is neutral. But when I get all tied in knots about it, all of a sudden it becomes negative. Was it negative? Eh, maybe, maybe not. It simply was an event that occurred and it was what it was. So when we can accept what is as what is and nothing can change if it's already been created, then we have the ability to begin to live in a more peaceful existence. And it truly is our choice to do that but of course not always easy not always easy simple ideas but not always easy to do so when we are confused or upset what we want to do is take time for meditation you know just sit down or do a walking meditation that's valuable or a chanting meditation as we go into meditation and we spend 20 or 30 minutes we can contemplate, if we're chanting, we could contemplate the word peace or the word love. We could allow ourselves to simply follow our breath. Inhaling, exhaling. We can take the time to just bring ourselves from this mind that keeps wandering about into our heart space which is very, very clear. The heart is clear. The heart knows. And Ernest Holmes said that peace comes from a sense of union with the whole and confusion comes from a sense of separation. So we come back to the idea of oneness. And that's the main teaching in science mind. I am one with all that is. It's a same thing in unity, UFBL, any of the new thought teachings is all about 
There's only one thing going on. So what is that one thing? A universe that is constantly in motion. So when we can accept that, all of a sudden we can see the people around us differently. Now, come on, we're probably not gonna get it right 100% of the time, but we'll probably get it right more often than not. Peace, it, it doesn't mean to be in a place where there's no noise or trouble or hard work. It means to be in the midst of those things and to stay calm. Yeah. When we allow ourselves to stay in that peaceful state, Thich Nhat Hanh wrote, every breath we take, every step we make can be filled with peace, joy, and serenity. It really is a choice. I wanted to share a little story with you uh, about a young woman uh, in a lively city amid, amid the chaos of daily life lived a young woman named June, feeling overwhelmed by the demands and noise around her. And we could relate to that here in Toronto. She sought relief within. June discovered a tiny garden hidden behind her apartment building. Determined to cultivate inner peace, she cleared the weeds and planted delicate flowers. Every day she sat amidst the blossoms, closed her eyes and embraced the tranquility. Through this simple act, she learned to silence the external clamor and nurture her inner serenity. As her garden flourished, so did her spirit, teaching June the profound beauty of finding peace amidst the chaos. We all have the ability to do something that will allow us to be calm. Now we can use medication, we can use all kinds of things, but really just taking time to sit quietly especially with natural setting, but your living room works as well. Sitting in silence for five to 20 minutes every day um, or read something really beautiful and inspiring, something that really kind of wakes you up. I know Kathy, who did our land acknowledgement, she reads the Science Mind every day. And, uh, you know, there's something in doing that daily reading that really brings us to center. And that's a really important thing. And if you look at the front of the Science Mind book, it does have a daily reading list, which is quite wonderful to use. You can go for a walk in nature, just being present and noticing the beauty and the smells and the sounds. We calm ourselves down, not by being angry about outer events or even acknowledging the outer event, but rather allowing ourselves to be clear amidst the chaos. It's probably always going to be there. So we may as well find a way, <laughs> we might as well find a way to make it easier to deal with. <clears throat> so I invite you to try some spiritual practices if you haven't, if there's something going on in your life and you feel that you need treatment support or something like that, you can talk to Reverend Sharon, who's producing this show here today or this service you can contact me and I will do treatment with you. Uh, there's something about that that can allow us to come to a much more peaceful place. So as we come to the closing of this talk, I just want to say that if you go to the Science of Mind Archives and Library Foundation, uh, you can find all kinds of articles and resources about peace, about the writings of Ernest Holmes, and the many, many things we can do to arrive at a peaceful, loving state.